Hey, welcome, or welcome back, to 4 of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, someone who is, indeed, very YouTube famous is, of course, Jeffree Star. And you will have seen the thumbnail, the title, and maybe you would even have read some of the description box. But so you know that this particularly beautiful look today has been done with the aid of the Jawbreaker palette. And one of the lip ammunitions. So if you want to find out exactly how well uh, this palette performed, particularly the pressed pigments, and what I think of it so far, then my friend, uh, you are in uh, precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Fan is on, still ridiculously hot in my kitchen. Different top on because normally I do my face before I get dressed and go out because Coty S bun goes everywhere, we all know this. Um, but I was on a bit of a mercy mission this morning, one of my mates rang me. She's in absolute agony and I needed to take him to hospital. Turns out she's got a very, very badly sprained foot, strong painkillers and crutches. So. I'd been out and I'd been back and then I went out to pick her up again and came back again. I would have stayed with her but I was waiting for my FedEx delivery which arrived. Now you would have seen this in the thumbnail, the title and the description but I'm just going to show you all of my order now. I started off with the pineapple, what is it, pineapple juice. Lip scrub. Pineapple is my favourite fruit. And I love Jeffrey's lip scrubs, basically. So, yeah, it's a win-win. Three lip ammos, because the liquid lipsticks that he's released this time, the ones I wanted were so similar to ones he's already released, I can find the comparison that I did, I'll stick it up there, um, that I'd already got, I thought, well, there's no really point in me buying them, because when they're on my lips, you're not really going to be able to tell the difference. Um, and I have been starting to wear more bullet lipsticks recently. So, these are so cute. This one is Candy Freeze. It's gorgeous. They've all got a bit of sparkle in them. This is a gorgeous. They smell like, like vanilla. Mm. So that's Candy Freeze. And then I have glazed, which is what my eyes are usually like when I get up first thing in the morning, which is this sort of bronzy, goldy, greeny kind of, I just thought it'd be nice for the summer. And then I got yummy, because well, it's purple. I mean, you know me and purple. I was so tempted to pick up the purple Urkel lipstick as well, but... I need to see that swatch alongside a blow pony first to decide how close it is in colour before I decide whether I'm going to buy that. See this is the problem, if Geoffrey had stuck like he did with his first two releases, his white caps and his yellow caps, he only released five liquid lipsticks, which is affordable, you know, you can, you can just about stretch to that. And then he started doing eights and you're like, well hang on a minute. That's why you've run out of colours, Geoffrey. You were greedy. Not everyone's a multi-millionaire. Stop it. But I did do the bundle for the... Um, I had to. I mean, I've got all of his other ones. And there was a discount, and I wasn't sure how long the bundle discount would last for. So here's the mini breaker. Which looks like this. And I'm sure you've all seen this anyway, but I'm just going to show you. 
this is again our pre eyeshadow strike press pigment so which ones are uh, attention bubble gum which is the pink one at the bottom this side uh, good lord Jeffrey could you print this and you bite me which is the one next to it the purple orange crush which is the one in the middle on the top purple punch which is the one dead centre in the middle are not intended for use around the immediate eye area so those are the pressed pigments so those two and those two no that way um, doesn't bother me my eyes are not that sensitive to pigment um, it does mean that you probably get a bit of staining but I get that from a lot of different you know if, if you've got highly pigmented shadows you're going to get staining anyway this is the biggest palette he's done in terms of number of shades much as how I loved the blue blood and the blood sugar and the alien packaging oh Jeffrey this is so much easier to store beautiful big mirror in it as always Jeffrey's mirrors are very very good quality um, they are the kind of mirror you can and it, look it it folds straight back without you feeling like you're going to actually break the damn case which is is awesome right bubble gum because that's one of the duplicate shades so that's up the top there bubble gum licorice which is this red one not surprising the one i'm gonna have to auto correct to duck family friendly channel gum drop which is the one next to it snack which is that one dark red oh the dark red and what question mark that one over there orange juice which is next to it cotton candy which is over here bite me which is the other duplicate shade there's only two duplicates and cherry wet so that's the pigments in this one now obviously I'm going in with this palette now my face is washed, moisturised, primed, SPF'd etc I have used my antiperspirant primer uh, I asked Anya where she got her fluffy um, headbands from because I was getting bored with my cat ears so I've, I've now got rainbow ones which match my new rainbow pride nails and I've already filmed all my pride films which was ridiculously bad timing on my behalf but there we go right I'm a teaching channel which means partly because of my chronic pain and partly because I'm a teaching channel I talk you through every single step so if I'm going too slowly for you, then by all means, speed me up or skip ahead or whatever. But please bear in mind that this is aimed for all skill levels, from people who've never picked up a brush before to complete experts. Not that I'm claiming to be a complete expert. Right, let's get you zoomed in. And when I say zoomed in, I actually mean zoomed in unlike some people where you're still half a mile from the camera. Now, all I've got on my eyes at the moment is MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, which I have not set. But it's a ridiculously hot day, so that's absolutely dry now and not sticky at all. Now, I've got deep set or double lidded eyes, which a lot of people confuse with being hooded lids. Now, with my eyes open and my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid. Not much of it, but you can see all of it. So I've not got hooded lids. Hooded lids means that your upper lid completely covers your mobile lid right down to the lash line. 
either half or full. So you've either got a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now with, with deep set eyes or sometimes called double lidded, if I cover my mobile lid that you can see and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back away that you can't see. And if I cover the static lid and close my eye, you can see again I've got lid there that tucks back in. You can still follow my tutorial, you can still follow anybody's tutorial. Just get a flat brush, something like this, and just sketch out where you need your crease to fall, rather than running it through your actual socket space. It will mean it reduces the space between your crease and your brow, so just use slightly smaller brushes than I do and you should be absolutely fine. It's time, it is time to put some makeup on. Right, These, uh, this is one of the animal brushes that I recommend in my um, film, which are my favourite brushes, which is linked in the description box. This is a blending brush number seven and I'm going to commence with putting some colour on. Right. Oh Lord, there are, I, I have so many colours that I want to do that I genuinely don't know quite where to start. Let's go in with bubblegum to start with, which is the pink on the top row. Not much kick up to it, so that's good. So I've picked the pigment up and I'm just going to tap this in place all the way along and tap back again because obviously we've not set the lid colour, the, um, oh, the paint pot yet. So I need to tap it on before I start blending to help set the lid. And the reason I didn't use a powder on the lid to set it, like a translucent powder, is because I want these colours to be as popping as possible. So, patted that all on and now I'm just going to do some little cir light circular movements, holding the brush right at the end just to make sure I've got it all blended. Now when I'm blending towards the nose I do circular movements going up and over towards the nose coming away, I reverse the direction and come back again. This is because I'm four to five years old and I've lost about ten stone over the last few years so the skin on my eyelids moves and by doing circular movements you're very very gently moving your skin on your lids to make sure you don't miss any areas and get any white patches. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing on this side. So, again, mm. while I'm blinding this eye I can actually close it, but I do have additional issues with this eye. You can see I've got very, very deep creasing here. Now normally doing the circular blendings will any creasing that you've got it will actually work round it and make sure that the whole lid is covered and you don't get any gaps. Where this eye was pulled around so much when I was a kid and when I say a kid I mean like five years old so we're talking 40 years ago. Um, Lord I'm old aren't I? Never mind. Um, sometimes the, um, the creasing there is, is too deep and I have to actually gently stretch the lid out to make sure. I certainly have to do that with shimmers otherwise they, they sort of pack into the crease and end up falling down my lid during the day. This has gone on really nicely. Is this one of the pigments? Yeah, this is one of the pigments but it's behaving like an eyeshadow. Because normally when you pop a, put a pigment on and then try and blend it, Normally it will blend some of the colour away and you have to kind of sort of tap to blend rather than doing the circular blending that I'm doing. 
but this has behaved really well. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, just needs a little bit of a little bit of assistance just in that corner. Don't stretch your lid out like that if the circular movement works for you, because otherwise you will end up with deep creases. And I can promise you, once you've got them, they don't go away no matter what creams you use. Right, I've got a clean washcloth and I'm just going to clean this brush off on. And I'm going to go into... I think I'll go into... Duck. Be very careful how I say that. Yeah, you can tell it's a pigment that's slightly stained the bristles. Is this a pigment? Yes, this one's a pigment too. It's surprising because for a pigment they're not normally pigment you'll, you'll find will kick up quite a lot in the pan but these are really not doing that which is nice to see and they've obviously got the oh look at that right now because the lid is set instead of tapping I can go straight in with windscreen wipers oh my goodness that's beautiful oh look at that colour Sorry folks, I'm having a bit of a moment to myself here. I have been wanting Jeffrey to release a palette like this for so long. I honestly thought this is what the Thirsty palette was going to look like. Um, anyway, so I've added some more colour, but what I'm going to do this time, when I'm doing the circular movements, I'm not going to travel up the eye, I'm going to keep the bottom set of bristles in contact with that line I've just put in. If you've moved your crease up, do the same thing. Just keep the bristles in touch with that line. You may need to go to a smaller brush. I'm using the same size brush. So people with deep set eyes are very lucky. We normally have a lot of lid space to play with. Well, upper lid space anyway. So, but you may need to go to a slightly smaller one. It needs to be sort of, when you put it like that, it needs to cover pretty much half of the colour we've already put down. Okay. And again, blending across to the middle, reversing the direction and coming back again. I really like that. And then very, very lightly buffing just where the two colours meet, just to soften that blend a little bit. Oh, that's pretty. You're probably going to see quite a few tutorials with this, folks. Hope you don't mind that. So again, same thing this side, run it through in a windscreen wiper movement, always hold your brushes right at the end and then you put as little pressure on your eye as possible, because you don't really want to, the skin on your eyes is, is the most delicate skin on your body. If you were to imagine that um, the skin on your body is like um, paper you'd write a letter on or you, or you get a letter on from a company. Uh, the skin on your elbows and your knees and your feet is more like cardboard thickness. The skin on your face is um, like a slightly lighter weight, like a newspaper thickness and the skin on your eyes is tissue paper if you can imagine how delicate tissue paper is that's how delicate the skin on your eyes is so that's how lightly you have to be blending I've just taken some of the pigment off of there because there's still quite a bit of pigment on the brush I'm just trying to blend where the two colours meet I have got more fallout this side um, but I usually do because this eyelid is looser than the other one because it got pulled around so much. So I'm just going to take the uh, the duck off of this brush and I'm going to go in with a slightly smaller brush. I'm really tempted actually to do a matte look and then add like a shimmer over one of the shimmers over the top because the, there are four colours on here that are absolutely calling to me. 
Right, this is what my Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro eyeshadow brush, which as you can see is more of an oval, which means when I hold it flat like that I get a much more flat line through the crease because we don't want the next colour we put on to completely cover this one here. So I'm going to go into uh, Gumdrop, which, <laughs> surprise, surprise, another pigment. This one's got slightly more kick up in pan than the other two have. But that's okay because it just means you can lightly press back into the pan next time round and pick up more pigment on your brush. So again I'm going to run that through the crease and this time I'm not going to put any more pigment on the brush and I'm going to blend on the actual line itself because I'm just trying to soften the edges of that line. I don't want it to move up the eye at all. I'm just softening the edges a little bit and then pick up some of that pigment and pop it onto the outer third of the eye. This is such a pretty colour. If you decide it's not showing up enough you can always go in again and build the colour up which you can see is what I'm doing here and then just again a little bit of light blending just to soften the edges there. That's such a pretty shade. I mean, you can see these are going over the, each other very, very well. Um, pigments don't usually perform this well, though. The reason things are called pressed pigments rather than eyeshadows is because um, in eyeshadows you have more talc or mica um, or blending agent and fewer colour molecules or pigment molecules, um, which is why eyeshadows blend out quicker and why pressed pigments give you a deeper colour because there's more parts of colour than there are blending parts in a pigment. So normally pigments do not behave this well. I've never known a pigment behave this well. Um, and I'm not saying that. Everyone knows that I love Jeffrey's formula for his eyeshadows. Um, but you also know that I'm not going to give you any bull crap. I mean, you've, you've seen yourself how well this has gone on. Um, I am genuinely surprised that pigments have responded that well. I'm just taking uh, the rest of this gumdrop off of the brush because I'm going to use the same brush again and I'm going to go into cute which I don't think is a pigment. Let me have a look. No, it's not. So I'm going to use an eyeshadow now rather than a pigment. But it is beautiful. I'm just going to, because I can't close this eye and I need to be able to get as much lid space available to me as I can, I'm going to look down into a little mirror down here so that you can still see what's going on. This is a lovely colour too. This is a really beautiful pastel aqua. I always think aqua and lilac work so well together. That's pretty. That's super, super pretty. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Oh, a little bit more pigment on that brush and never mind, let's just sweep some of that across. As I said, I do have to do this at this point, otherwise what happens is it all collects in the crease and then as I move my eye during the day, 
I get fallout like this happening. So, but this is why I always do now anyway. I do my eyes first and my base last or afterwards. That's super pretty. And I'm going to go into uh, Jawbreaker, which is one of the shimmers in here. I'm just going to top this shade with some of this Jawbreaker. Really pretty shade. I'm going in with it dry initially, just to see how much oomph it has. Let's see what happens when we wet it. Let me grab... This is a, just a fixing spray from I Heart Revolution, it's the vanilla and coconut scent. Uh, never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. Always load the pigment up onto the brush and then spray the brush. Otherwise you will end up getting hard pan and you will end up ruining your thing. I always wipe the ferrule dry as well so that no moisture gets in and loosens the, the glue holding the bristles. Oh, yeah, that makes a bit of a difference when you apply it wet, doesn't it? Wow. This is such a pretty palette. I mean, it's ideal for, for some of the so many beautiful shades in here. And I really like this with that sort of the aqua of the jawbreaker just slightly peeping through. Not jawbreaker, cute. This is jawbreaker. Ooh, that's pretty. Right, I'm going to pause you while I do my foundation, etc. And I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. So you're going to see me instantly. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Right, I am back now. As that jawbreaker shade dried down, it's actually gone more opaque and has completely covered the beautiful, cute um, <clears throat> aqua shade that I put on. So uh, I think I'm going to pop, I'm going to use my flat top brush. And I'm going to go into Sour, which is a real sour apple green. Look at that. I'm just going to run that under the lower lash line. I love flat top brushes for doing this. They get right up under your lashes. They're brilliant. I think they're meant to be used for liner on your top lash, but I never use them for that. I always use them for this. I'm flinching this side because obviously it's the eye that I'm blinding and I haven't got any peripheral vision. Mmm, nice. And then this is, it's actually the brush that I got out of the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, the Swamp Queen one, flat at the top but chunky, which is great again for getting up under your lashes. So I'm going to dip into Cute and use that to buff the lower lash line out. Seeing as how I kind of stole its thunder when I covered it with Jawbreaker. I wasn't expecting Jawbreaker to go quite that opaque actually. I'm 
I just want a little bit of that cute just up the outside there. Because um, I'm struggling with wearing liners at the moment. My fibro is making my eyes very, very watery. I combine that with hay fever. But I've just found that if I continue the lower lash line up just, just slightly like that, it gives the same effect of the eye being elongated out. So you get the same effect without um, the hassle, really. Uh, this is actually an old lip brush that I bought years and years and years ago. And I'm going to go in with some sarcophagus. I'm just going to pop some of that up under my brow here. This is one of the shades that can be worn on pretty much any skin tone. It's a, a champagne gold that um, I, I will admit I've not seen it on super super dark skin. So it might look a tad ashy where it's got the champagne under um, undertone. But I've certainly seen it on sort of you know NC40, NC45 and it looks lovely. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I chuck some more highlight everywhere else on my face, put some mascara on, choose which of those lippies I want to wear, do something with my hair, and I'll be right back. I'm back. Decided to keep the uh, fluffy ears in. Uh, I went for the yummy lipstick. Now, as with his other ones that um, like what is it, beauty pageant and, oh lord, the one he released at Christmas, I can't remember the name of it now, um, you kind of have to rub them on the back of your hand to get them started, because they have almost got like a, like a waxy coating on the outside, once you get through that, you can then build the colour up on your lips, um, but yeah, you just need to, a couple of swipes on the back of your hand, just to kind of get through that initial seal, but I really like these, because they're, they're not 100% opaque, which means they're going to fade very gracefully. But for the summer it's ideal because, you know, you don't necessarily want, you know, really, really strong colours on. So, what do I think, so far, of Jawbreaker? Um, now, obviously, I've used, what, four, five, six of the colours. I've got an awful lot more that I need to check. I've only ever done sort of the light, the light ones so far. I still need to see what these deeper ones perform like, what the rest of the shimmers perform like. But I did use three of the pigments up here, and I was really shocked that although they're pressed pigments, they behaved like an eyeshadow. They didn't grab and refused to blend out. They blended out really, really well and they built up very easily. Um, I actually had to double check. Well, you saw, I double checked on the box as to whether they were pigments or not because I couldn't believe how well they were behaving. So if you are someone who um, is new to using press pigments and you're a little unsure, this would be probably a really good introduction to pressed pigments because it's not um, as scary as like the subculture or you know other pressed pigment palettes that are out there. This is by far his best pressed pigment formula he's ever done because he's got pressed pigments in blood sugar and blue blood. Um, but this is by far the best formulation of pressed pigments that he's ever done. I'd even go so far as to say so far with the three that I've used, certainly in terms of light pastel pressed pigments, best I've ever used from any company, full stop. Um, blended really well together, you saw that, you saw how easily the colours blended together. Um, I, I was quite surprised by the Jawbreaker shade because... Uh, <laughs> It was more opaque than I was expecting it to be, so I kind of lost the aqua that I'd first put down. 
which is why I, I popped the green underneath my eye. But so far, of the, the what? How many shades are in here? 24? So of the, what, quarter of a palette that I've tried so far, I like it. So it's 25% of it gets a 100% yes. Uh, I will try the other 75%. Most likely, you're going to see quite a few of those on camera, but I will try um, all the rest of the palette and let you know uh, whether my opinion on it changes. Obviously, I've also got the little mini palette I need to try. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be having some fun with those palettes over the next uh, few weeks. I've also got, I've actually got a lot of palettes that I've got here that... I need to get reviewed but I've got to be honest these are the ones that are calling me most so I'm probably going to use these and then uh, go back to trying some of the others uh, what I might end up doing is um, filming with the others so I can get the film up but uh, probably be using this when I'm not filming uh, which is another way that I, I do to, to test more of the shades so there we go. Um, I hope you liked this this look and this first introduction to the uh, Jawbreaker palette and uh, Libre Munition. I don't know why I decided to go French then. I do apologise. The heat's getting to me, folks. I, I need to, I need I need to take my cold drink and I need to go and put my feet up and actually I need to do some editing. <laughs> Right, okay, um, I'm still having people being unsubscribed from my channel, so even if I'm still appearing in your newsfeed, please double check you're still subscribed, please double check you've still got the notification bell rung, um, and if you have got it rung, check that it is still showing for all notifications, not just some, because apparently the subscribe button and the notification bell isn't enough to tell YouTube that you want to hear when I'm uploading films, you have to tell them you want all the notifications because if you say some of the notifications you get none of the notifications could I say notifications any more times in this film? probably yeah, probably right, um, obviously I've got a lot of other films you can watch and catch up on especially if you have been unsubscribed and you've missed some but uh, for the time being all that remains for me to say as ever is your stay fabulous? And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.